The third assessment guideline is to test more than one cognitive domain, and in fact, the more the better. I have put, uh, or as a reminder, the cognitive domains that are frequently recommended that you assess when you do a comprehensive evaluation. And I have, in the left side of this slide, given some examples of the kinds of tests that I would recommend. In terms of memory and learning, because memory is so important to test, and because episodic memory is so prevalent in individuals with Alzheimer's, I recommend that you give a standardized test of story retelling that has an immediate and a delayed condition. Another type of test is a word learning where individuals given a longer list of words and has to try and remember them immediately and then in a delayed and sometimes with cues later. In terms of language performance problems that we know now can occur very, very early uh, in MCI and be a marker of early MCI. Fundamentally, what is happening is that the cognitive processes that support our ability uh, to be communicative have been impaired, whether it's attention or it's memory. And so a good type of test is something like a repetition test, where you have to comprehend and remember information and repeat it. Uh, and if you use a test that gets more difficult as you go along, then that's a way of staging out somebody in terms of whether they might have MCI. Concept definition is another kind of test that's often given to screen. Um, many people use a category naming test as well. But I would recommend something both for comprehension and for expression. Misdiagnosis of Lewy body disease is very serious because neuroleptic antipsychotic medications uh, that are tolerated by individuals with Parkinson's disease are extremely toxic to individuals with Lewy body disease. If a Lewy body patient is given neuroleptic antipsychotic medication, they can experience severe confusion, severe Parkinsonism, sedation, and even death. To help in differentiating someone with Lewy body disease from someone with Parkinson's disease, we think of cognitive symptoms and motor symptoms and when they occur. When cognitive symptoms occur before motor symptoms, then the likelihood is that it's Lewy body disease. When motor symptoms occur before cognitive, then we think of it being Parkinson's disease. Now let's talk about the characteristics of vascular MCI. And as you might guess, they vary by type of pathology. However, when you look at uh, the whole body of literature about vascular disease and vascular MCI, you'll find that a few characteristics keep coming up, namely impaired planning and judgment, emotional ability, impaired attention, and word finding difficulties. And finally, a mild aphasia. And because the hallmark sign of Alzheimer's disease is episodic memory deficit, it is essential to test episodic memory. And as I previously mentioned, a very good way to do that is with a story retelling test that has an immediate and delayed condition. The cumulative effects of memory with aging and with these different pathologies is that, of course, you aren't as efficient in your cognitive processing. And as a result, you see changes in language production and comprehension. And now we understand that language performance deficits are increasingly recognized as early indicators of disease. Now it's also the case that working memory has some of experiences, some effects of aging. So as we age, our ability to perceive and interpret and associate and do all those great things is changed a bit and that we're slower in processing. 
also our attentional abilities are diminished and our buffer capacities for holding information and consciousness can be attenuated. Thus, when we try to understand uh, something and we have to activate episodic memory, if it has impairment and working memory also has impairment due to aging and also due to Alzheimer's pathology, then what we're likely to see as clinicians is um, change in language performance tasks. So we can see subtle deficits on tests of language comprehension and production. Now these are going to be mild because we're talking about mild cognitive impairment. And in this case, mild cognitive impairment that is due to Alzheimer's pathology. So what clinicians want to look for are these subtle deficits and you're likely to find them on a test where you tell somebody a story, you have them tell it to you again, and then you have a delay and ask them to repeat it. And what you see is a significant change from how healthy older adults perform on that task. They forget some of the information. If you're doing a following commands task and the commands get more complex, go from a one, say, to a three-step command, then you're likely to see at the three-step level that the individual has forgotten that third step that they're to execute if they're MCI Alzheimer's. In terms of the cognitive profile of individuals with Parkinson's disease, it is safe to say that cognition is affected in all cases of individuals who have the disease for several years. It is not uncommon to have the disease for many, many years, but in the very earliest stages, the cognitive changes aren't sufficient to meet the criteria for MCI, but nonetheless, there is slowness in thinking, which is referred to as bradyphrenia. We talked about bradykinesia, which is slowness in movement, but bradyphrenia is very characteristic of Parkinson's disease. In large part because of procedural memory deficits. So those cognitive functions that go on that you are not aware of, such as priming, uh, are slower in individuals with Parkinson's disease. Retrieval is slower. Working memory deficits are also apparent too. Individuals aren't as effective in focusing attention in things like divided attention tasks. Executive functions are less effective Declarative memory, you recall, refers to your semantic memory and your episodic memory and your lexical memory. Your semantic memory in Parkinson's disease holds well your knowledge of the world, as does your lexical knowledge. Uh, episodic memory is affected in individuals later in the disease. Visual hallucinations are common in individuals with Parkinson's as our visual processing deficits. The criteria for diagnosing Parkinson's disease MCI or MCI Parkinson's disease are listed on this slide. The individual must have evidence of cognitive decline in two or more domains that is not due to delirium or depression or drugs or motor function. The individual must, though, have functional independence in that they're able to do, probably slowly, but able to do the basic activities of daily living, though likely they have some difficulty with instrumental activities of daily living. Sleep disorders are very common early. So motor movements that are normally inhibited in healthy individuals occur during sleep. And the rapid eye movement behavior disorder is often seen. And this is an unusual disorder in which the individual during sleep seems to be acting out a dream sequence and they may flail their arms or even get out of bed, uh, yell out, scream uh, during rapid eye movement. 